My five biggest takeaways from a very strange Sunday in the National Football League. Number five. The Browns and Baker Mayfield are way better without Odell Beckham. Now, you can illustrate that by pointing out that they went 14 and 15 in games that he played with them and are now 9 and 5 without him. But I wouldn't even need that. You just see it. And I think that there is a lot of reason for it. But the primary reason is, and I think we all know people like this, some people just fill up the room. Like Odell Beckham, apparently his teammates love him. I don't know him. I've, I've, I've maybe shaken his hand once in my life. I don't claim to know Odell Beckham at all. But what is clear is, as we all know, there are some people who just sort of take up a lot of space relative to their actual surface area. And he is obviously that guy. Part of that is reputation. I, I pointed out this morning on Get Up that I have never once counted Jarvis Landry's targets in a game for the Cleveland Browns or David Njoku's or Anthony Schwartz's or Donovan Peoples-Jones's or anyone else's. And we're all counting Odell's targets. But the primary reason we are is because we're all wondering, is he going to explode if the number doesn't go up? That impacted both Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski. I don't know exactly what that says about them. Does it say that Baker Mayfield isn't confident enough in himself? Does it say that he just doesn't have the clout? Like, I think a guy like Aaron Rodgers, a guy like Tom Brady, going back over the course of time, guys like John Elway, and you know who I'm talking about. If any wide receiver is ever complaining about anything, we'll look at them and say, shut up. I'll get you the ball when I get you the ball. In the meantime, block for somebody. Like, I don't think Baker Mayfield can do that. And I think this was an impact. I think whether he even realized it or not, he felt an internal pressure to make sure he involved OBJ in ways that probably were not to the benefit of the football team. And then Stefanski, I think, did the same. And at some point, it had to become obvious that they were better off not doing that. It was obvious to me all through last year, and I, that's why I was campaigning during the offseason for them to trade him. Which brings me to my next point. Number four. The real fault here lies with the Browns' front office. Why didn't they trade Odell Beckham for anything? Why did they have him around if it was obviously causing problems for the quarterback, even if that wasn't OBJ's fault? Who was it who said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result? Where did that quote come from? I mean, it was Einstein? I was about to say, I think it's I Einstein. I think so. Let me check. Let me I'm not check. sure, but whoever said it was right... <laughs> And they just kept banging their head against that wall and banging their head against that wall. And they should have traded him for anything they could get for him last week because they could have maintained some control over the situation. They've now lost that. They will waive him at 4 o'clock today. Tomorrow afternoon, God forbid, I think he signs with Green Bay. And I think it puts the Packers over the top. To me, that would be the single best spot for him. You put that guy on that team with Aaron Rodgers and you give them a couple of weeks and you got Devontae Adams and him. And the way that defense is playing right now, I think he could be, that to me feels like the spot. Was it Einstein, by the way? It was Einstein. boy, Greeny. Call. Number three. And Hembo next. The moment was, no, no, I'm sorry, I skipped one. The Chiefs offense is a disaster, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but Patrick Mahomes is part of the problem right now, not the solution. You know, I thought Mahomes might have played the best game of his career in a loss. That was the Super Bowl last year. He had no chance we had a stat that he ran for almost 500 yards scrambling and avoiding sacks in that game. Five football fields worth of running for his life. And he made play after play in a game in which he had no chance because their offensive line was dominated. And so I thought to myself, Patrick Mahomes is Superman. What happened? What has happened to him? You watched that game yesterday, and I watched every snap of it in part because I had all kinds of travel delays that had me just unable to watch red zone at that point so i was just watching one game so i watched every snap of that one and i know that jordan love was a big part of the story and we'll get to him but i think the bigger story here is the chiefs offense it is not bailing them out and i can't believe it i don't know why they should have improved that offensive line i think it is the play calling and the decision making and i think a lot of it is the quarterback and i can't believe it because i was ready to crown patrick mahomes the best quarterback I'd ever seen. And right now, he is playing below average NFL football. Now, I'm not giving up on him by any means or anything.
but you got to call it like you see it. Patrick Mahomes is playing badly right now. He's not just struggling a little. He's playing badly. And that is a big part of the reason why they look so bad. Number two. Number two is I did think the moment looked too big for Jordan Love yesterday. The guys that I did the show with this morning, Dan Orlovsky and others, did not agree with that. They thought he played okay. I did not. But I am not ready to criticize him on that front. I feel terrible for Jordan Love. <laughs> you know, I've often said that Patrick Mahomes was drafted into the perfect situation, the perfect coaching staff, the perfect guy to sit behind and play, unbelievable talent around him. Jordan Love might be starting his career in the most disadvantageous circumstances that I've ever seen. <laughs> to be drafted and to be your draft, the, the, the selection of you to have destroyed the relationship between Aaron freaking Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, and then to sit and come in, in during a, a, a global pandemic so you get no preseason, no work, no nothing. You sit the whole first year and you don't even touch the ball. And now your first start comes when Aaron Rodgers has tested positive, after which the world finds out that he's not vaccinated, after which he goes on McAfee on Friday, and however it is you felt about that, and we'll talk about it later, clearly becomes the number one talking point in the United States of America. And now you're Jordan Love, and you got to go out and play a football game at Arrowhead Stadium, which everyone says is the loudest and toughest place to play of any outdoor stadium in the NFL. So I don't blame the kid. That was an impossible circumstance. He looked about the way I expected him to look. Number one. And then finally, every good team has a bad day. To me, that's all yesterday was for the Cowboys. Almost every good team played bad yesterday. Dallas, Buffalo, the Rams, weirdest day that I can ever remember. So I am not striking a chord of enormous concern for the Cowboys off their loss. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.